everyone. Welcome to a new hour of National Report. So glad you're here. I'm Emma Reckenberg. I'm Sean Kreisman. Thanks so much for joining us. It is a bus for the Democrats in the Senate, plus the president's press briefing sending the White House on cleanup. At one point, the commander in chief appearing to state that Russian President Vladimir Putin might launch a minor incursion into Ukraine. What could be the ramifications to that? Joining us now with reaction to President Biden's comments about that possible incursion is Senator and the author of this book, The Mind of a Conservative Woman, Marsha Blackburn. Senator, welcome to the program. Thanks for being here. Wow. Uh, yesterday, immediately following the press conference, the White House cleaning up the president's minor incursion comment on Russia and Ukraine, issuing a statement. I'll share it to our viewers here. Uh, president Biden has been clear with the Russian president. If any Russian military forces move across the Ukrainian border, that's a renewed invasion, and it will be met with a swift, severe, and united response from the United States in and our allies here. Senator, do you think we will see a military conflict in Ukraine under our commander in chief's watch? That press conference yesterday was astounding on a lot of different levels, but the comments about Russia is basically inviting Putin to go on in and basically saying, if you go into the Donbass, we're not going to do anything about that. I thought it was astounding. Everyone knows that Putin is intent on the old Soviet Union or greater Russia. And he is trying to move forward with that. When Barack Obama was president, they sent meals ready to eat and blankets to Ukraine to fight. And then when Trump was president, what did they do? It was bombs and bullets that they sent for Ukraine to protect themselves. Joe Biden is sending a message to our adversaries that he's weak, that he's factless, that he is not going to take any kind of action. And to our allies, he is basically saying, hey, hey man, don't count on me. We're not going to be there. It is dangerous for us when he gets out here and makes these type comments. There was a lot that was said during the press, uh, the two hour press conference yesterday. He was asked a lot about his own voting legislation as a domestic issue here. And we saw on Capitol Hill last night, the fireworks that played out. Democratic senators, Kirsten Sinema, Joe Manchin, joining Republicans in blocking changes to the filibuster, essentially sinking Democrats voting legislation. Talk to me about that move from Manchin and Cinema. How significant was that? Oh, it's very significant. They agree that you ought not to blow up the Senate and blow up the rules of the Senate in order to blow up the courts, blow up the rule of law and everything else that they are wanting to tear apart and put in place their socialist agenda. Now, that is where you see things happening on Capitol Hill because Chuck Schumer fearing a primary opponent and challenge from AOC is trying to go as far left as he can go. And he is causing his members to have to go walk the plank on these tough votes. But you have Manchin and Cinema who say, no, the tradition of the Senate, the rules of the Senate are that when legislation comes over, you hit a 60 vote threshold to get on the bill, which means you're going to then debate that bill, not pass it, but debate it. And so Manchin and Cinema want to preserve that. Now, I know that's frustrating for a lot of people. When I was in the House, we would get so frustrated with the Senate, but that's the way they operate, mm -hmm. that 60 vote threshold. So Manchin and Cinema did vote with us. But bear in mind that we as conservatives, as Republicans here in D.C., have to win every vote every day. The Democrats only have to win once. And right. with one vote, what they're planning to do is pack the court, make D.C. a state, change uh, a lot of the way our daily lives work and give them control over your children, their education, over your small business. Let the IRS look at your bank account 24 hours a day. Mm. Open up our border so that we don't have borders and put the Green New Deal in place. They want a socialist government. 
and this is their goal. They know they have a very narrow window to achieve it. So they are doubling down on a lot of bad policy, and we're going to have to keep at it to stop it from taking place. Well, as it stands right now, uh, the filibuster remains, and as you point out, rightly so, it's there to protect the minority, which we know can change depending on who wins in each and every election here. Um, but speaking of elections, the president attempting to tie midterm election legitimacy to his own doomed voting reform bill. Take a listen to this. I think if, in fact, no matter how hard they make it for minorities to vote, I think you're going to see them willing to stand in line and, and defy the attempt to keep them from being able to vote. But it's going to be difficult. I, I, I make no bones about that. It's going to be difficult. He had also, in that press briefing, again, questioned uh, the legitimacy of the 2022 midterms if his voting bill were not to pass, as we saw, uh, did not happen last night. In fact, this was so controversial, these comments, uh, that the White House press secretary did send out a tweet saying that POTUS was not casting doubt on the legitimacy of the 2022 election. He was making the opposite point. In 2020, a record number of voters turned out in the face of a pandemic, and election officials made sure they could vote and have those votes counted. He was explaining the results would be illegitimate if states do what the former president asked them to do after the 2020 election, toss out ballots, overturn results after the fact. The big lie is putting our democracy at risk. We are fighting to protect it. Again, that just came out last hour. So if it's the first time you're hearing it, uh, thanks for, for standing by. Your reaction to this sort of cleanup uh, that we've seen from the White House press secretary on behalf of the words coming out of the president's own mouth? Well, this is why they don't put him behind the microphone and why he doesn't do press conferences. And you have to just know that they had their heads in their hands as they listened to a lot of this yesterday and his complete unawareness of what is happening on so many fronts, whether it's supply chain or inflation, his missteps there on elections and the lack of awareness that he was trying to federalize elections. And yeah. there is such a lack of understanding on his part of what is actually taking place. The American people do not want their elections federalized. Mm -hmm. They want their local election commission, their friends and neighbors running those elections. They want their states running those elections. They do not want to give the federal government control and power to be able to determine who wins and who loses an election. And as of yesterday night, uh, Democrats didn't have the votes to get it through, along with 10 other Republicans. Senator Marsha Blackburn, thank you so much for joining us today. We do appreciate it. Got it. Thank, thank you. you. Bye-bye. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.